Hi guys. Don't know if I'm headless again today. There's nothing I can do about it if I am. Anyway, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Portland, Oregon. Here on this gorgeous fall day. Wednesday, October 4th, 2017. And we need to be packing up the gas sucking truck and heading to the lovely town of Eugene, Oregon tonight. But before I go, I'm going to do what I do every Wednesday. <coughs> and that is bring you my climate change meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet it's heading directly into a burning lake of fire and obviously still the lingering climate change story being Hurricane Maria particularly down there in uh, in Puerto Rico although I just got a newsletter from St. Croix good God Almighty you will not hear about the carnage in St. Croix anywhere on the mainstream media but plenty of it in Puerto Rico, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. This one I really enjoyed. NASA photos of Puerto Rico show how Maria wiped out power on the island. There you go. And, uh, you know, these, uh, these nighttime photos, I mentioned these before, where these satellite photos going around at nighttime around the planet where you can just look at these pictures and the entire outlines of different places on the planet just lit up like a fucking Christmas tree. And hallelujah, what Puerto Rico looking like, you know, looking like Antarctica. There's a little spot over San Juan and the rest of the island looking just like Antarctica. Hallelujah! So take a wild guess as every one of these climate change disasters unfolds. T take a guess. Obviously the number one, the number one priority after these uh, disasters is to rebuild the infrastructure going in there and spending billions and billions and billions of dollars to rebuild the very infrastructure that is contributing to the climate change that tore out the infrastructure. Uh, and, and this is what is true anywhere on the planet. The first order of priority. Well that and of course to get the gasoline flowing partly to fill up the generators for the power. Anyway you're following me but anyway the uh, it looks like looks like a few nights of darkness. There you go. You really should go on this. This is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, anyway, I've got to move on ahead. As long as we're down there in Puerto Rico, and so now that uh, everything has been wrecked down there, uh, take a wild guess what is building, particularly because of the lack of electricity Take a wild guess. Puerto Ricans now are at risk of developing all of these different awful diseases after the hurricane. Uh, more and more, now that they've dealt with the with the first hit, this ongoing series of punches. Good God, it's pretty, anything that a mosquito can give you, you're, you're pretty much going to get in in Puerto Rico. Uh, my guess is we're going to probably see some some uh, cholera down there too. Um, 
Miami Herald says 40% of Puerto Ricans already live below the poverty level, making the massive damage even more difficult to deal with. And since Hurricane Maria knocked out power to all of the island, hospitals are just now starting to run off, uh, get their electricity back. This is more than just a nuisance. It is a public health crisis building in Puerto Rico. We have the planet eaters starting outside the door of the motel room. I love it. I, I, I just love the background. Okay, so what is the latest White House response? I guess they separate the White House response from the uh, from the Donald Trump response, which we'll get to in a minute. But whoever the talking White House is, White House to see 29 billion disaster aid package. Uh, the Trump administration is fi finalizing a 29 billion disaster aid package. And, and, and guess how it breaks down. Of the 29 billion, 13 billion will be going to hurricane victims, while 16 billion, uh, more than going to hurricane victims, is going to shore up the federal government-backed flood insurance program. The federal-backed flood insurance pro program. So uh, whether you call it 13 billion or 29 billion, you know this is what I was talking about last week. You know how many times? So every year, year after year, as all of this shit uh, cranks up, we're, we're going to get more and more of these faults along coastlines, on islands like Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, all of these trop tropical places. Uh, particularly along coastlines, although Houston, Texas is, is 40 miles inland, but year after year the bill is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more the hands are going to be held out to the, uh, to the, the maid is asking me, I'm not quite ready to leave yet. We're, I'm getting the evil eye from the, from the motel maid to wrap up my rant and get the hell out of here. Uh, you know, this shit, this, first you have the direct aid, but this goddamn flood insurance thing, uh, I love how they uh, talk about how conservatives, conservatives are getting, are getting sick and tired of, uh, of this flood I insurance program where, where these goddamn people who live in, in these flood zones, they get flooded and it's just the, the federal taxpayers, whether through direct subsidies or through the federally backed flood insurance. It, it's two ways of saying the same thing. It, it's that over and over and over again. Uh, I have a friend in Austin. She just laughs about it. She's been flooded three times. She likes to get flooded because she's milking this goddamn system, this bullshit, uh, federally, you know, taxpayer-backed flood insurance thing. She's collected three times on this. Um, conservatives liken the program to a taxpayer bailout. That is exactly what this bullshit flood insurance uh, is. Anyway guys, I think you get the point. Uh, I love the uh, the last sentence of this story on uh, thousands, many thousands of Puerto Ricans will need to be evacuated to the U.S. mainland. No shit, Sherlock. Can you say right here, 
in October of 2017, many thousands of Puerto Rican climate refugees will need to be evacuated to the U.S. mainland. And this number is going to go from the thousands to the millions. It's for, first, we're going to evacuate the, the Puerto Ricans to Miami, and then we're going to evacuate Miami where? To Orlando? You know, guys were fucked. Where is my We Are So Fucked sign? Ah, shit, I left my, my We Are So Fucked sign in my fucking us gas sucking truck. Should I say gas fucking truck? Okay, so many stories, which I'll get to on Thursday, uh, about Donald Trump in Puerto Rico yesterday. There you go. So I, th th there's hundreds of, of, of stories about the mainstream media having an absolute field day with Donald Trump responding to a climate change disaster. Yes, uh, this is like, I don't know, Sancho Panza going that some, some disaster of chipmunks and, and, and Sancho Panza going down to a, into a chipmunk, maybe a, maybe a prairie dog village being gassed by a bunch of real estate developers or something and, and Sancho Panza showing sympathy for a, a, a wrecked prairie dog village is kind of like Donald Trump going to Puerto Rico to talk about that disaster. Speaking of Sancho Panza, I think Sancho Panza is returning to this rant. Um, he's been out on his walk. Alright. Did you get him in the truck? Yeah. Okay. I guess uh, Sancho is back in the truck. I'm not sure how since Sancho did not have a key to the truck. Anyway. Windows were cracked. <clears throat> okay. All right, so what does Trump have to say about the disaster in Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico did not suffer a real catastrophe. There you go. That is, after visiting the island, Trump is of the opinion Puerto Rico did not suffer a, quote, real catastrophe, you know, like, I guess, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, Trump kicked off his visit to Hurricane Ravage Puerto Rico Tuesday by continuing to applaud his own federal recovery efforts <clears throat> while simultaneously attempting to downplay the devastation caused by Hurricane Maria, <clears throat> which has left 95% of the island without power and more than 50% without access to clean water two weeks after making landfall. Uh, there you go. Anyway, I will get, uh, I, I will get back to Donald Trump uh, in Puerto Rico tomorrow in my dump the Trump de Hive Roundup rant. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so while Trump is down there in Puerto Rico obviously what's going on on the home front in Washington DC Trump EPA plan to neuter Obama's clean power plan okay this is where we gotta pull out both the buttons okay there's two levels here guys no shit Sherlock that Donald Trump is going to neuter Obama's clean power plant. No shit, Sherlock. The bullshit button is the very term Farrakh Obama clean power plan, <clears throat> which was the absolute tiniest little, tiniest little toe in the water that Farrakh Obama was doing 
which wasn't going to do a goddamn thing to save this country or this planet from all of this shit. It was to get the little greenies off his back and to promote the Barack Obama environmental agenda. Come on now, that ain't even <clears throat> So even the tiniest little step that Barack Obama made, Trump obviously is, is just going to derail it. There you go. The Clean Power Act was Obama's landmark plan for climate change. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, we've been over that for many years. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, guys, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break all this bullshit down. There's no sense. That's the bottom line. It was fucking bullshit to begin with, and, and now if 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 it was possible to make it any more bullshit, it's it's been it's more bullshit than it was uh, last week. Is the bottom line? Okay, what's going on in this latest poll? Americans want their local leaders, their local leaders, to fight global warming. <laughs> Americans want their local, their local officials to take on the challenge of battling global warming now that Trump is withdrawing the, the nation from an international climate change agreement. Oh yeah, so how many, uh, <clears throat> Talking about this uh, climate change agreement, let's see, 42% oppose getting out of the climate agreement, Paris Agreement, while 28% favored the withdrawal. 28% had no strong opinion. Of course, I am of the 28% of Americans favoring Trump withdrawing from the uh, Paris Climate Agreement, but obviously for 180 degree different reasons that he withdrew from it. There you go. So, uh, <clears throat> where is this? It's according to this latest poll, 72% of Americans say they believe climate change is happening 63% of Americans think human activity is at least partially responsible for that. So they go back and forth uh, talking to people who understand that we are fucked to talking to the clueless morons. I like clueless moron Ruth Akaviva of Delaware. Quote, what are you going to do about it? It's a natural phenomenon. It is Mother Nature changing some things. It is Mother Nature changing some things. <clears throat> it's not a big deal. So this is average, clueless fucking American continuing uh, talking about Anybody who claims climate change is real, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely bull crap. Bull crap. There is no way in God's world they can prove to me it's man-made. Adding, there is no need to spend taxpayer money on climate change, which gets to this next one. I've mentioned this before. Okay, so then they figuring out how much is the average American, including the 72% of Americans believing in climate change and the 63% uh, claiming human cause, most Americans said they would be willing to spend a little bit extra on their electricity bill to fight climate change, <laughs> with the key words being a little. Just over half, 51% of respondents said they would be willing to pay an additional $1 per month 
to fight climate change. There you go. Uh, while we're at it, just under half of Americans called climate change a very or extremely important issue in contrast two -thir at least two-thirds. We've got 48 percent calling climate change a very or extremely important issue while at least two-thirds say health care, the economy, and terrorism rate higher than climate change. D.D. All right, let's get out of our own country. Let's go over there to Canada. I've had this story. This is just a developing story. Auditor slams Canada on lack of climate actions. Canada's rhetoric on climate change must be translated into action, the Environment Commissioner said Tuesday in a scathing report blaming years of inertia for leaving the nation vulnerable to climate change. Yes, the uh, country is presently about 200 million tons short of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Paris Accord commitment to slash carbon dioxide emissions by 30 percent. Uh, a Senate report in March said it would require a Herculean shift in energy use to meet Canada's tar target equivalent to removing every car, truck, airplane, train, and ship from the country of Canada, and after doing that, the country might still fall short of its climate commitments. There you go. And nowhere in this entire and in nowhere in this entire story do you see the words oil sands or tar sands mentioned. Okay, from Canada to <clears throat> Antarctica. Uh, more daytime images of the Larsen Sea iceberg have come in and they are amazing. In July, as I, of course, I reported here, one of the largest icebergs ever recorded measuring about the size of Delaware and containing a volume of ice twice the size of Lake Erie broke off the Larsen, ice, Larsen Sea Ice Shelf in northwest Antarctica. And now we're finally getting the daylight to look uh, at this massive thing uh, floating around down there. The original iceberg weighed about one trillion tons. There you go. Scientists are closely monitoring the ice shelf because of the warming occurring in the region and the unsettling history of other ice shelves in the area. Two of its neighbors, Larson A and Larson B, have already collapsed. Uh, the melting of the ice shelf, the ice shelf, the ice sticking out into the ocean, does not affect global sea levels di directly since the ice was already floating like an ice cube in the glass. However, when ice shelves like Larson C melt, they free up land-based ice behind them to flow faster into the sea, which does raise sea levels. This is for uh, these climate, you know, these fucking deniers talking about, you know, it's, 
is floating in the sea. It, it doesn't make a goddamn bit of difference. Okay, but as long as we're talking about clueless fucking moron deniers, let's go, uh, well, the two stories on this. New study finds cattle are responsible for way more <coughs> greenhouse gas emissions than we thought. And here is what you can do about it. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Huh. What can you what can you personally do about the new findings that cattle because of their methane emissions through their belches and farts. This is no fucking joke. These cow belches and farts. Maybe what you can do about it is stop eating beef. Just an idea that that I'm throwing out there. Uh, whoever this is. Uh, one green planet. Maybe you can stop eating beef. Now, of course, they say you can also stop consuming dairy products, and I'm not going to listen to that inconvenient truth. Um, okay, I'm going to read this deep. Three scientists with the Joint Global Change Research Institute, blah, 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 published new research that shows global methane emissions from livestock are much higher than previous estimates by the United Nations Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change. The findings show that emissions are about 11% higher than previously projected estimates. Especially as methane emissions have risen sharply in Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And of course, uh, methane has a warming potential that is significantly higher than carbon dioxide. Methane traps up to 100 times more heat in the atmosphere than CO2 within a five-year period and 72 times more within 20 years. In the U.S., methane emissions come primarily from industry, natural gas, and petroleum systems and from, of course, the agriculture industry. And then uh, next to that is this story about the limp dick mainstream environmentalist who claim that, well, I will just stop eating industrial agriculture beef and instead, I'm just going to switch to these grass-fed burgers to save the planet. Morning, morning. Let the mainstream media explain it to you. Your grass-fed burger is making climate change worse. We cannot have our steak and eat it too. Grass-fed beef products are contributing to climate change, according to a new study. Environmentally conscious meat eaters, and I would say environmentally conscious beef eaters, have touted grass-fed meat and dairy products as a solution to help negate the impact that cow's flatulence has on the environment. Unfortunately, that is not the case. This is, uh, what is this new 
report published by the Food Climate Research Network, grazed and confused, grazed and confused, quoting Peter Smith, one of the authors of the report in Science Magazine, quote, switching to grass-fed beef and dairy does not solve the climate problem. Only a reduction in consumption of livestock products will do that. And uh, how about this? Raising grass-fed cows leads to deforestation, another big climate change issue, as farmers chop down forest in order to expand their pastures. <clears throat> and of course, it makes no difference if you think you're getting around that, that by eating the uh, these CAFO beef cattle. Well, then we have the problem, what are they eating and belching? Bottom line, essentially, there is no environmentally environmentally friendly way for humans to eat meat. This is, I don't know who Garnet, Tara Garnet, uh, the lead author of the study, quote, sadly, though it would be nice if the pro-grazers were right, they aren't. The truth is, we cannot eat as much meat as we like and save the planet. Now, of course, I I'm not going to get into my rant why your old eco-Nazi uh, does not eat beef but does eat pork and chicken. <clears throat> well, I would say doesn't eat beef but does eat pork, does not eat seafood but does eat chicken. That's another rant I've had about 500 times. <clears throat> so after those two stories about methane, which is what those two stories were about, we have <clears throat> ancient Mars may have thawed through methane burst. Ancient Mars may have been warmed by burst of methane trapped under its surface, a new study finds. There you go. And they break all this down. Uh, this new research found evidence of thawing caused by explosive bursts of the potent greenhouse gas methane from under the Martian surface. Uh, the research suggests that during warming periods, the amount of ice covering Mars shrank. This led to materials known as methane calthrates underneath the Martian surface to decompose. Hmm. Calthrates are made of methane trapped in ice. As calthrates destabilize, they can explosively release methane. One such Martian outburst could have released about 200 trillion tons of methane into the atmosphere. Such outbursts could have raised temperatures on Mars by 9 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. Yes, I love how they, they uh, wind up this story about this ongoing research. Uh, prior work suggests 
that burst of methane currently seen on Mars might come, still be coming from decomposing calthrites. And I love how this can be tested in the near future on Mars. I don't think you're going to have to go to Mars to, uh, in the near future. You will not have to go to Mars to see how methane bursts, otherwise known as methane burps. Uh, or methane bombs. You're not going to have to travel to Mars to see what effect methane bombs exploding on a planet due to a planet. But we're going to wind up, I can't remember what Alert Tribes member sent me this article out of Truth Dig. Truth Dig. Ah, I am embarrassed for Truth Dig. With this story, the gasoline car will be history before you know it. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to save the planet with electric cars. Oh, God. Here it is how electric cars are going to save the planet. And then I love Truth Dig. I don't know where it is in this article. You know, talking about, well, of course, uh, we need to make sure that the electricity powering the electric vehicles is coming from a sustainable source and they list hydropower as a sustainable environmentally friendly way of making electricity to charge your planet saving electric car with. Bottom line of this bullshit story and winding up this rant, the transformation is coming and coming quickly. And remember, in 2004, there were no iPhones or really smart phones. Now there are billions of them around the world. Electric vehicles will be like that. The world is going to heat up. But we have a choice whether it heats up 4 degrees or 12 degrees. You would not like a 12 degree increase. Just ask any Puerto Rican. Anyway guys, I have left my We Are So Fuck sign in the truck. and. Uh, so there will be no we are so fucked summit. I'm going to wrap up this week's climate change meltdown roundup rant because i got to pack up in the gas trucking, gas trucking suck. I'm getting the evil eye from the motel maid that I've got 15 minutes to get my ass back in my gas sucking truck heading to Eugene, Oregon. I will come at you from Eugene, Oregon with my dump the trunk the hive roundup rant tomorrow for this rant. Smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that gorgeous day outside that window. Bye, guys.